Hello guys, so I know that this channel is usually about programming. I believe that this has to do a little bit about programming because currently I'm actually in the process of becoming a machine learning engineer. Not that I'm in college again or anything, I'm just taking some courses and I found that knowing linear algebra is kind of like the basics of moving forward into becoming a machine learning engineer. Now, if you do not want to become a machine learning engineer, that's okay. This is still going to be useful for you. Let's just focus on the matter at hand, which is turning two vectors that we're going to have, uh, that, that we're only going to have magnitude and direction into a component. So let's dive right in. I am going to have two vectors then, and I am going to draw them right here. And all I'm going to have from these two vectors is first its magnitude. So for example, this first vector is going to have a magnitude of three and its direction. So for this one, we can say that maybe this is a 40 degree angle. I will also have another vector, which is going to be vector W over here. And again, all I'm going to have is its magnitude, which in this case, I'm just going to set it to five and its direction, which is going to be, let's say 120 degrees. So this is everything that I have. And with this information, what we want to get, or what we want to know is how much is the vector V plus the vector W, so its component. So this is exactly what we want to know. So how do we do this? Well, for this, we're going to have to remember the Pythagorean theorem, which tells us that we can get an opposing vector by getting or calculating the sign of the of an angle. So for example, vector V right here could be calculated by let me just write it down in here. So vector B could be calculated first by multiplying the hypotenuse by the sine of the angle. So this is the formula to getting the magnitude of the opposing vector, in this case, B. If we want to get A, what we have to do, because it is adjacent to this angle, is get three again, which is the hypotenuse, times the cosine of that angle, right? And what we could also do, by the way, this is a 90 degree angle, and this would be a 50 degree angle because, you know, a triangle has to have 180 degrees in their angles. So this would be 50 having this, what we could also do is calculate A, let me just write it down here. So this would be the same as multiplying three times the sine of 50 degrees because A is the opposing vector to the 50 degree angle over here. And because B is the adjacent vector to that 50 degree angle, this would be the same as multiplying three by the cosine of 50 degrees. And let me prove it to you that this is going to have the same result. So I'm going to open my calculator in here and I am going to get first the sine of 40. So the sine of 40 is going to be point, well, a big number. And I'm going to multiply this by three. And I'm just going to round this up to 1.93. So this is going to be equal. Let me write it down like this. So this is going to be equal to 1.93. You know, round it up. Now, let me get the cosine of 50. So I'm going to write down 50, get its cosine. And you may already notice that it's the same value multiplied by three, it's still 1.93 rounded up. So this is going to be equal to 1.93. We can do the same thing 
with the vector a. So I am going to get first the cosine of 40, multiply it by 3, which is going to be 2.3, really rounded up to two decimals. I don't know why my keyboard is popping up all the time. So this is 2.3. And then I can do the same thing by getting the sine of 50, which again, you can see how it's the same value as the cosine of 40. And multiply by 3, which is the hypotenuse, I still get 2.3. So I'm going to write down 2.3. Now that is, that is in the case of the first vector. Let's do it for the second vector. Now my second vector, and let me just move it a little bit to the right, so we know that this is another vector. Uh, my second vector, what it has, and what we have to do, is get a triangle, something like this. And we know that this is a 90 degree angle, and we know that this would be a 60 degree angle because this over here has to be 180 degrees, right? And if we know that this is 120, then this has to be the remaining 60. So we already know the angle for this one. And because a triangle has to have a total of 180 degrees, well, we know that this is a 30 degree angle. And this keyboard is starting to annoy me. So let's, let's keep uh, moving. This is uh, going to be also B, the vector B, of course, in another vector, in, in the case of the second vector, the vector W. But B is still going to be equal to, well, in this case, 5, because that's the magnitude of the hypotenuse, times the sine of its opposing angle, which is 60 or times the cosine of its adjacent angle, which is 30. So again, because 60 and 30 complement each other, the sine of 60 is going to be equal to the cosine of 30. And let's do the angle A in here, which is going to be equal to 5 times the cosine of 60. Now, there is one thing that we have to point out in here. Notice that A is moving to the left. So it's actually moving this way, which is if you think about a plane that is a negative value. So I have to make sure that my A is going to have a negative value. You know, just think about it. Let me remove that line that I made there. So let me just put this minus there, because you can think about it as just your plane like this. You have your positive values and your negative values, right? So the A is actually moving towards the negative value. So that is why we have to keep that in mind. And I'm just going to place that minus in here to remember that. And now I can move over to my calculator and calculate the sine of 60 times 5. So the sine of 60 times 5, which is going to be 4.33. I'm going to write it down here. And then the cosine of 60 times 5. So 60 cosine times 5, which is going to be 2.5. And I already know that this is going to be a negative, so 2.5, like that. Now, we already have the values of the magnitudes for all of the vectors. What we have to do to make this addition is simply to add the B's and the A's together. So we would have to add 1.93 to 4.33, which is going to be 6.26, and I'm going to write it down over here as 6.26, and I'm going to write it to the right because this is the B, and I'm going to make this a J, and I will explain about this in just a second, and this is going to be 
positive. And then we're going to add the A's together. So 2.3 minus 2.5. So this will actually be a negative value of 0 0.2. And I'm going to make this an I. So this is the value for my vector or for the components of my vectors. And this is on unit vector notation. And I'm going to leave it like this in unit vector notation. Just uh, as a side note, a unit vector, if you don't remember, is just a vector that only has value in one dimension. So something like this, you would have this is a unit vector in one dimension and this in the other dimension. So what I'm doing in here basically is just saying that if we have i to be equal to 1, 0 and we have j to be equal to 0, 1, then this z value or this constant value multiplied by this is going to get the component of v and w. And let me prove it uh, fairly quickly in here. I am going to multiply minus 0.2 times i, which is simply going to be minus 0 0.2 and 0, plus 6.26 times j. So this is going to be 0 because this is 0 in here. And over here we're going to have 6.26. So of course, this is going to add up to minus 0 0.2 and 6.26. And this, now let me change the color, this right here is going to be equal to this over here. Only this is in unit vector notation. And what I have down here is in column notation or column vector notation. So these are the same thing, just I made two notations in here, one in unit vector and one in column vector. But maybe in column vector, now you understand a little bit better like what is this? Because if you create a plane in here, let me just create a plane fairly quickly in here. And we add up the two values or the two vectors that we had. Let me write this down. This is going to be 3. And this is not going to be exactly the same thing. I'm not, uh, this is not going to be perfect, but let me just add them together. I am going to have a 5 over here. So if I do this, the result would be something like this by adding these two vectors together. And the component then would be this third vector in here, something like this. And its coordinates would actually be minus, so in here it would go minus 0 0.2 and it would go up 6.26, right? And this is how then we can add two vectors together when we only have their magnitude and their direction and have a notation of unit vector, translate that notation into something that is probably a little bit more common, which is the column vector notation. And then a quick, ugly uh, plane in here showing a little bit better what this means and how these two vectors added together bring this third vector that is represented by this value in here. So hopefully this has been useful for you. If it was, don't forget to leave a like and a comment and share this video with anyone that you think might find it useful as well. And you know, hopefully I will continue to upload videos in my path towards becoming a machine learning engineer or a deep learning engineer, I don't really know yet. Uh, if you are not interested in that, it doesn't matter. I hopefully Hopefully, this particular video on turning two vectors that we only have magnitude and direction into a component of these vectors 
of these of these vectors has been helpful.